Hello everyone and welcome to Club Reaction to Aberdeen 2, Rangers 1, here on Club at 22, the Rangers podcast. I am Scott Carney and I am here to bring reaction to, which probably is most indefinitely the end of Phil Clement at Rangers, or in my opinion that's what it should be. My opinion hasn't changed since the Kilmarnock match. When what I've seen against Kilmarnock flung up all the all every red flag that you want to be flung up in terms of a Rangers manager at Ibrox and it's just a continuing theme really on to tonight. I don't understand what we're doing, I don't understand what Clermont is trying to do. And it ultimately we are seeing a team that are nowhere near where we need to be. Like we're not even close to being where we need to be. It's easy to say that the Clermont's doing a, um, an experiment or a transition period or whatever it may be, but we're still at the point where there's no there's no form of progression, there's no form of the team developing. We are, we are going backwards, if anything, uh, and tonight is... It should, be the, it should be the last of it. It really, really should be the last of it. Um, he made a number of changes tonight in the starting eleven, which again I didn't, I didn't really understand. Um, it was uh, Butland Tavernier, Tavernier I get coming back in. By the way, before anybody says it, I understand that. Sure, came back into the team. Balogun played at left centre half. He brought in Casemiro at left back. Anybody? Anybody? No, I'll wait for the answers to that. The midfield was Baron, Raskin, and Lawrence. The front three was Barami. Dessers and McCausland as Cherney has picked up a knock and couldn't travel with the team. Um, I don't think Rangers were good at any point in the first half. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that i seen something that you didn't. I don't think Rangers were good at all through the, the entirety of the first half. I thought we were extremely poor. I thought it was only really one team in it. Barring a, a, a shot from Lawrence from the outside of the box, um, which was quite comfortably saved by the keeper, a kind of looping volley and uh, an offside goal. Rangers weren't in the game. We weren't in the game at all. And that that itself for me is a worry because a game like this, even a, even as a, a player that doesn't really know the club or doesn't really know even Scottish football, and I'm trying to cover what the basis of what I think Clement will say, you cannot think to yourself that the ones that are joint top of the league right now are not going to be up for this. You have to be up for it, and Rangers really didn't look like we were. We really didn't look like we were. I thought Rangers were poor all over the pitch. And ultimately, it was... It was um, obviously, Aberdeen got in the half at, at 1-0. Um, the goal itself, I thought Casemiro was all at sea. Again, I think you should probably take note of that Casemiro was not a left-back, but he was playing left-back tonight. Uh, Clermont seems determined to not only make Sterling a wee bit lost at sea, but also make Casemiro lost at sea. And uh, yeah, um, it's finished easily um, to go to go one 0 And even at that, after that, there was no response from Rangers. And if anything, Aberdeen are probably unlucky not to be two 0 up at half time with a shot with Shinny that hits the post. And I, I, I'm just kind of sitting watching, going, "Well, it's kind of." I hate saying it because it's kind of what I expected. I don't. I didn't really expect anything major from Rangers tonight, and ultimately I got that. I didn't get anything that I thought was going to change my mind. I had a bit of a buzz last night after Ross and I done club deck corner, and even coming into the day, I was like, right. And then the closer it got to kick off, I was like, mm, I really don't fancy this. I really, really don't fancy it. And I don't think there's any Rangers fan out there that can honestly say that they expected Rangers to to go in there and do the business tonight. We're in, a, we're in a poor form just now, really, really poor form, and I don't think Clement knows what he's doing. I, I think we're at the point where we've seen Rangers managers that have went before him being sacked for less than this, I really do. And if I'm too negative, honestly, and I have took it in the chin recently if I've been a wee bit too negative, but it's what I believe, it's what I believe, I think we're just watching a guy that's working the, his way towards the end of his Rangers managerial career, I really do, and I, I can't see how we can continue on with him, I don't see any improvement, that's not good, tonight's not good, it really isn't, it's not even close to being good enough, 
Aberdeen gave them their credit. They wanted it more than Rangers tonight. Do I think they're particularly great? No, but my goodness, do they have 11 players on that pitch? They want to fight. They want des- They have desire. They want to do everything they can for their manager. We don't have that. We don't. Do- it's, it's clear as day, we don't have that. We don't have a team that are willing to put everything on the line, put their heart and soul into every transition, every battle, every anything to do with anything with the football on the football pitch. We don't have that. We don't have that that heart within the, the team. And ultimately, no matter what, that will come from the manager and it will feed its way down. And that's where we find ourselves. Into the second half, Rangers make a baffling substitution again for me as we put Sterling on at right wing. McCausen wasn't very good in the first half, don't get me wrong, but put Sterling on at right wing. Don't understand that. Honestly, I don't. I just don't get it. I really, really don't. It's a, a crazy decision, um, but ultimately we do get ourselves back into the game, and it's a moment of absolute magic for Barami, who, who battles through about three players and then decides, to, I'm just going to get my boot on this and aim it at that far corner, and he manages just to score it. It's a real bit of quality, it really is. It's a real bit of something that you're looking for. That kind of player, that player that we've signed, our number 10 that ironically plays in left wing, Gets his, he gets his toe on the edge of a, a bit of a battle and get, turns it into the net. And I thought, right, well, maybe, maybe, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe try and do something now. Don't get me wrong, see, a draw tonight does nothing for Rangers. Honestly, I don't. I don't think it's worth anything for me to try and sit here and convince you that a draw was going to be good enough because it wouldn't have been good enough. Rangers had to win tonight. Um, and even after we scored and then you've seen the reaction following that, there was a few Rangers had their tails up for about five minutes after the goal. After that, we just resorted to the same thing, and it was Aberdeen that that took advantage of a a bit of hopeless defending. I don't want to be too critical on Tav. I don't know what else he can do, but it bounces through Butland's legs. Casemiro runs into the net and runs back out, and it's easily turned into the net to make it to make it two one to Aberdeen. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all that she wrote. We're in a position now where I, I, I thought we were after the Kilmarnock game. Um, Clement cannot continue as the Rangers manager. The board have to do whatever they need to do to sort things out. Because right now we're just we're not going anywhere. We're really not going anywhere and we are going backwards. We are nine points behind Celtic and we are nine points behind Aberdeen. And it is the 30th of October. Put a case to me. I, I urge all of you in the comments to put a case forward to me to say that Philip Clement should remain as Rangers manager because I don't see it. Honestly, I don't see it. It's a sorry state of affairs. It's a result that I probably didn't. It was not unexpected. It really isn't unexpected. I think I did expect um, Rangers to lose tonight, no matter how positive I wanted to remain about it. I mean, I, I predicted a draw last night on Club Deck Corner, and that shows you how confident I am in this Rangers team. We are rudderless, we are leaderless, we are without a clue of what style or structure of football that we are trying to play. We're going to continue down the same road, no matter how much we tell ourselves that this is a transition. Come on, can come out with stats and tell me that this and that and that and this, but it's not good enough. It really isn't good enough, and come on, should be removed from his position. Do I think he will be? After Rangers' books that come out, I very much doubt it, and I think we're in for a very, very long season. A very, very long season. We have to somehow try and manage to get ourselves to a final um, on Sunday. I'm not really sure how we do that because what you're witnessing tonight is a team that don't want it. They don't want to. They really don't want it. They don't want to give their all. Um, and we are we are now nine points behind Aberdeen. Um, nothing else to say apart from that. Um, we will be back on Friday night with Club Live to piece together this and try and preview the Motherwell game. But yeah, it's a it's a bit of a sobering night tonight, I think. Um, one that's maybe not too unexpected, I think, for the majority of fans. But we are we're at the point now where we have to change our manager, and we don't have a board in, posi- in the place to be able to do that. So thank you for tuning in for me tonight. We'll see, speak to you all on Friday. We are back to do the Rangers podcast. Cheers. <laughs>